We'll start with a multi-channel fluorescence image set collected in this well of the microtiter plate uh, with the M7000. I'm going to open it in EVOS analysis and clicking on this button launches that separate application. Uh, what we're seeing on the screen is a list of the associated files for that data set. And if I move my cursor over the image, some new information appears, including the name of the file that I'm working with. There is a zoom control here that lets me zoom up and down. I can also just take my cursor and uh, double click with the mouse and it will center and zoom where I'm pointing it uh, to get back out. Right clicking jumps back out to the full field of view. At the bottom is a set of tools and we'll go through them one by one here. First is display. This is a similar setup as to the controls that we have for the M7000 where you can turn on different combinations of fluorescence channels and uh, examine them either individually or in combination. Uh, and there's also the ability to change the brightness, the contrast, and the gamma in order to kind of sharpen up details here. This button on the right hand side resets everything back to the defaults. The next control is a grid and we can place that on to get an idea of the distribution of cells uh, in this field of view. The grid can be changed for its uh, density. We can make it more dense by making selections here or just leave it at the default for this particular magnification. Um, there's the ability to turn on a scale bar, so this button will do that. We can move it around on the screen. You can also grab it and resize it and it will move in 50 micron increments uh, to give you kind of nice even numbers there. Uh, clicking the button for reset will put it back into a default position here. You can also change the color or turn on and off the end bars. The next tool is a histogram tool and this shows us the distribution of intensities in the image. Uh, this window can be moved around and resized and um, just gives you kind of an idea of uh, what's, what's happening with the, the brightness distribution in the image. Next tool is measurements and annotations. So this gives you a number of different uh, controls here that you can select. Uh, including a uh, rectangle. This is showing a perimeter information, but we can switch that over to dimensions. Uh, there's the ability to draw ovals as well. We can change the thickness by clicking here and uh, selecting perhaps a different color if we like. Um, there can also be information like the area that's encompassed by this shape. It can be moved around and resized like so. Uh, there are more complex shapes that we can do here, like uh, so. And again, we can just kind of grab these and move them around or uh, change their aspect ratios by dragging them, etc. Uh, this can let you highlight particular areas in your image and then you can go over and click Save and it will save with all the information that's shown on the screen here. next button is show cell count and we have a video that covers this but um, I'm going to switch over to the tag BFP channel here for this data set just to show you uh, what it looks like in this fluorescence mode um, because that helps us with the next button which is toggle pseudo color so I can turn this on and off and uh, basically this is handy if you have a pseudo color image that's kind of dim or that's hard to distinguish uh, say the blue against the dark background here switching it into monochrome uh, can help uh, show us some dimmer details in the image, but you can set it uh, however you like. And that's a quick review of the new uh, controls for EVOS analysis, measurement and annotations.